thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all the things that you've taken care of this week. We watch over the ones that we care about. We try to do everything we can, but you, you just intercede so many times. We thank you for the ability to come and study your word, precious Holy Spirit just directing us, for the fact that there's folks across the street that are receiving information from you through scripture that could cause the soul of an individual to run into the Holy Spirit and, and have a life-saving, life-changing situation arise and come into a salvation experience. I pray that you just watch over those folks, Lord, so that they don't get pulled astray. Let them learn your word before they get too far down the road. I pray that you allow us to study today in such a fashion that we have stuff to take with us into the world this week and use it wisely and give you the honor and glory for it in Christ's name. Uh, where was we at? Page 288. Start with verse 16. <laughs> All right. Verse before this, we told you there wasn't nothing in the law that did any good. So now he's got to make a statement to go again around that, and it says, "Therefore, it is the, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all." Now, you're gonna, anytime you read your Bible, you're gonna find out that this is gonna be the beginning of a parenthesis. There's gonna be a piece of verse 16 spoken. And then there's going to be a fill-in section all the way down to 21, 22 in that neighborhood. Then it'll pick up with the rest of that phrase and take it on. And the parentheses is going to fill in the voids for the argument of law and grace. That's the purpose of it. Define for me seed in this, in this instance. Define, please, seed in this instance. Talking about all the seed of Abraham. Okay. Are all yeah. The seed Here, of faith. Let, me, let me do it this way. The reason I this ask way. is because it says all conversation. The law and faith. Okay. Every conversation they have in the book of Romans always is referenced to the nation Israel as a starting statement. Always, though, it includes anybody that is of the law and anybody, which is the statement here, of the belief system of Abraham, which is completely dissecting. Abraham from the law. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You got a wrinkle in your forehead. Does that no, make no. sense? No, I just, the, the statement, the verse has a tendency Correct. to be confusing because it's talking about seed, but it's also talking about the seed of those who are in the law as well as those of faith. Correct. It must be talking about all physical Jews. No, talking about all people. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all what right. I'm trying to tell you. Here's the law all the time. It's given. It came down from the mountain and it's given. Now you've got a scenario where people outside the law, quote unquote, Abraham, because it wasn't even around when he did his salvation experience. Right. So you've got to have a statement. There's going to be people that are adhering to the law all the time. Today, same deal. Um, I just went to a little theme and jigger for the gentleman that passed away yesterday. And it was in a church. I didn't know what the church believed, but it was it was uh, obvious that they were liturgical. They were rite-oriented, rites-oriented. They were ritual-oriented. The lady is a pa the lady is a pastor. Okay, the pastor is a lady. Whatever, <laughs> same difference. It's, it's, it's but the, here's the deal: when that woman prayed, it wasn't a prayer. It was read out of a book. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking and putting all these things together. You've got a criteria to meet, which is the moment you have criteria to meet, you end up being the law. I want, I want to hear, if you haven't figured out, when you have old, old folks for parents, which is what I have too, and they wear out, you get some really interesting conversations at the end of the show. Mom was praying the other night. I didn't even know she could string that many words together. Okay? 
And her prayer was, Lord, please come and make this stop. Come and take me away. Come and give me peace. Come and give me hope. All the things that she feels in her, in her scrambled mind are slipping away, but it's still existing. Why? Because she has a one-on-one -on -one relationship, which she didn't need a book to read out of. She didn't need a list to go by. She had what was in her heart, what is still there, which is definitely scrambled, but still comes together when it needs to come together. All right? That's an individual in Christ. Um, how many of you pray at times and you don't even know how to start a prayer? How do I pray for this situation? All right? Just to have that conversation tells you one thing. You're already in contact with somebody that cares because you even have that thought come into your head. How do I respond? How do I get an information program sent to the, to the throne? And that's what takes place. Well, that's what she was doing. Abraham did that. Abraham did that through his whole duration of those 13 years. Why? He had a promise that he had to hang on to, and with that promise to hang on to, he didn't have anything else to hang on to. All right? There were nasty people saying nasty things all the time, all that type of stuff. Well, that's what they're talking about right here. So, when it comes to talking about anything, Abraham-based or grace-based, it's on this side of the fence. Anything else of the law is on that side of the fence. That's what they're talking about. That's why they say uh, of the seed. His seed was going to be the Jews. Only problem is, what do we consider? We're grafted into his tree. All right? And the fact that we're grafted into his tree means we, get the, we can name yourself with that, but you're different from it. I have never been under law, never intend to be under law, have always been a, a recipient of grace and mercy and justice and all those kind of things. And there are people that don't even know those things. They don't even know how to ask for those things. They don't even know how to function in those things. How many of you have figured out that when you make a bad decision and you feel guilty, that the guilt should go away relatively quick? Or how many of you like to revel in it? How many of you like to make a stew with your guilt and just eat it over and over and over again all day long? I'm trying to stop that, but I also try to put it, a, por a part of it, a portion of it, on the mantle so that I can look back and say, that's what I want to stay away from. Okay, now I'll give you another way. When I do a boo-boo right here, I say, yep, you died for that. There ain't no more mention of that boo-boo anywhere else down the street. I, I when Satan that. tries to pull that rascal up, I said, sorry, dealt with that boo-boo back here. It was on the cross and everything's gone. Get out of here. Get, do, do the thing Christ did to Peter. What did he say? Get the... <coughs> Please do that. Quit wrestling with this thing. How many of you... Um, the how, many of you have, no, how many of you have animals? That was a reluctantly hand up. I, now, I'm of the opinion that I'm the top of the food chain, okay? And at, the biggest comedy scenario I ever see is a man or a woman walking down the road with a dog on a leash and a plastic bag on their hand. <laughs> because I know what they're going to do with that plastic bag. Right. Okay? And that's not the worst part. Then they do what they do with the plastic bag. They pull their hand out of the plastic bag, they tie that on, and then they hook it on their hook or on their belt or they keep it in their hand. That's exactly what you're doing with guilt. Okay? Yeah. Now, keep that, keep that thought in your head for a while. They should toss it up on your porch. Well, they, <laughs> they probably, that would, probably wouldn't be the first time that would happen. Or hang it from the mailbox or whatever. Well, yeah. The reason I said that. All I'm saying is, just you need to understand, Abraham learned that. Okay? He learned it so well that as you get into the rest of these the verses on the other side of this, you're going to find out how he responded to it. He never, ever, 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 ever wavered in his belief that the integrity of God was going to validate that promise that was given to him. Never. Okay? And that's a lot to say for somebody that, that, that was 
as for all intents and purposes, never going to see that promise take place as far as mankind went. Well, the reason I said that is, yes, when we take it to Christ, he forgives us. Correct. But, because I still live in my earth suit, I have a little trouble sometimes getting out of my own way right. until I find he finally gets me out of my own way. Well, that's true. But at the same time, you're striving for this. Maturity. Okay? Mm -hmm. Maturity is going gonna, is gonna to be determined by where you are on the timeline of how you handle your sins, how you handle what you've done, how you handle taking in doctrine, how you handle responding to doctrine, how you experientially get into doctrine, how your manner of life comes about. Those are all indicators along this line of this. Okay? I understand you're going to have faux pas. That's not the problem. Right. But get away from them as fast as you can. That's all I'm saying. I agree. You're going to benefit yourself. You're going to have clearer thinking. You're going to have the Holy Spirit's going to be a whole lot more succinct in dealing with you than if you're over there going, you know, I know I really blew it yesterday. God, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to smack the slop out of whoever says it. That scripture says what? Don't let the sun go down. It's gone. You're the only one counting it. Flipping the universe isn't counted. Why do you think you're so special that you get to count yours and put them in the backpack? I've seen people, I guarantee you, in their spiritual life, they've got 42 yellow bags tied to their, to their hip. I guarantee it. And they act like it. And it's just, it's just not a good scenario. So that's, that's where they're at. So here we go. So the first half of the sentence, which is the first half of verse 22, is, is a great parenthesis. Idiomatic statement's going to be made here. And it says, for this reason, okay, out from Christ is going to be faith. It already tells you that the law isn't anywhere in it. It comes out of Christ, goes into you. The law doesn't, it doesn't count. All right? And, and that's why when you, when you, I think the most fun thing I ever learned was the out of in Greek. Okay? Or out from. They were two of the neatest things I ever saw come out of the scripture. Why? Because it, I learned about source. Okay? So that I know the source of things. It tells me whether I'm part of it or something that's been given to me by grace. Grace is constantly taking something out of Christ and inserting it into you. Constantly. Okay? It never, ever stops. Now, and then it talks about in order that, so out of and in, in order that, that, okay, out of and order that, there. It said, it may be according to grace. Anybody have a good definition of grace? This is the one I found in the book. It kind of gave a little bit of pace to it. All right? Now, grace is, 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 is I think that said is not, is it but glory. Okay? Now, that's Old English. Okay? Grace is glory begun, and glory is but grace perfected. Theme calls it a spectator's who does? The theme calls it a spectator. Yes, exactly. That's exactly true. As spectator sport. Grace is a, you're saying that grace is a spectator sport? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. I want you to follow Eva and Mike around all week long. And every time Mike dispenses grace to Eva, Eva dispenses grace to Mike, I want you to write it down. Oh, I see what you're saying. Rest my case. Where does it come from? And why does Mike have any grace? Eve asked that question all week long. <laughs> it's free. It's free. Exactly. Just because God wants to do it. It's God wants to do it, but he's also got a recipient that is acceptable to him to do it too. That's the ticket. He always wants to do it, but you have to be the, the plus R for him to do it. Would it, be, it would be correct would it, to say that grace is merciful givings from God that we don't deserve. Well, yeah, that's, that's a churchy way of saying it. Well, no, why did I you take it from I there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't, I don't, <laughs> that's, it is, but the thing of it is, what I'm 
I'm telling you is, I can't totally understand this. I can't totally understand this, or this, or this, or this. Not I take the little snippets that he gives me out of the book. Yeah. I try to kind of wrap my little dinky head around them. And then when I do every now and again, I know one thing grace is. I get up every morning and I can look at the day fresh every day and I can anything that happened the day before does not have to be on the chart for the next day. Now if it creeps over from there, I know who creeped it. Okay? Either my sin nature brought it over with it or one of Satan's little minions has given me a tweak and it's all passed through God's hands so I understand that it's a big deal. I understand. They're wrestling, they're wrestling with his mom right now. How much of the days of the past two weeks did you schedule that way? Not too many. <laughs> Not too many. Okay. It's exactly, I mean, all I'm saying is, when does grace show up? When it's needed. When it's needed. Who knows when it's needed? God does. Because okay. I don't have ESP. Okay. All right. That's what they're talking. What do you got to wrinkle? Well, I'm just like, grace is always there. It it's is. It's not like it's... it's right. It, but it becomes obvious to us at certain times. Maybe right. that's a better way to say it. Is that a better way to say Maybe it? Maybe we take advantage of it. Yeah, okay. It's all just hanging out. Right. There. It's always... Whether or not we choose to use it, it that's... Or accept it. Any, yeah, or yeah. accept it. That Anybody ever ride a uh, uh, merry-go-round <clears throat> when they had the rings along the side? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you, sorry, can you go back I'm that far? Sorry. I'm sorry, I never did that. Never told me to buy luminescence. Yeah, never took brass me rings <laughs> hanging from the side, and you can take them off. And when you go and ride the horse around, and, and you're up and down, and you pull a ring. I remember that. Yeah, I did. What? How old am I? Free ride. I guess. Well, evidently, there's people in here that will never know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Oh, I'm sorry. Have you ever done that? What? Right. The older amusement parks. The older amusement parks. Yes. All the ones up home had them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a northern. Okay, there we go. That's probably. Wow. Never seen it. Well, at any rate, it's, it's, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to smack the hornet's nest, but the thing of it is, is what it is, is it's out there, always, the ring was always hanging there, and you go by and you snag that rascal and you get enough of them, and you get the ring, that just meant you've got some dexterity in that tense, and you could take the ring over, and you could get a prize. What? I'm sorry, Julie, I'm really sorry. Okay. All right. Where are All you? I'm saying is grace is the same way. It's always there, and you, in your, in, sometimes when you're all wrapped up and stuff, you forget to reach out. It's always there. And when you reach out for it, then you can snag it. When you snag it, you've got it. It's something that's there, it's prepared, and it's prepared for every situation that you snag it for. Based on the same basis, is it not, as salvation? It's uh, always yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You died for everybody. Yeah, you that's can say that. The point. The point. I mean, they're symbiotic. When they go through life, when you're saved, you got grace tagging right along with it. In other words, it's there, but you have Correct. to take it. Exactly. And you have to take the brass ring. That's what it's talking about. All right? So that's what it says. And it says that it may be according to grace, all right? And it's got Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, non-meritorious, instantaneous thing, often perpetrated, uh, perpetrated things. Now, what's it talking about? Um, your salvation. It was instantaneous, but there were a truckload of things that were hooked to your salvation that you don't know about until you get to salvation. And then you get educated into your salvation. And then you can start benefiting from your salvation, which is called justification. All right? That's how the churchy way of saying it. What does that talk about? Um, what's if, go ahead. What's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 talk about? What my question is how he says Go ahead. No, go ahead. What's your question? Well, my question is, you, you receive justification mm -hmm. uh, when you accept. Mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. but, and it, it is like the justice or the law of God, right? Uh -huh. So how do you separate Justification from the law. Easy. The law was here for one reason. What? To let you know you needed justification. And to bring us to That is the together. only reason the law was ever put on planet Earth. Okay? Not for a list to live by. 
a list to show you. We talked about it before. It's a school bus. Yeah. It's taking you to school. It's not educating you. Don't you think it was also, too, to keep the people in line? Because they were, when they were making the journey. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine to some extent. To some extent, because they, they, it, yeah, it, that would have made that. I just think, you know, maybe I'm thinking too much, but they would have been a little barbaric in that journey. A little? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they, were, they were heathens, yeah. basically. Well, yeah. But yes, and understand, law in, of itself, it tells you flat out over and over again, the law is righteous. It is here for the right purpose. As a matter of fact, had the Caesars not come along and instituted the law that they instituted after Alexander, there would have not been the correct laws on the books for Christ to go before Pilate to be condemned. The Jews would have done whatever they did. No questions asked. So the law was definitely instituted. Christ came at the time that the law was functioning properly for the cross to even take place. That's how cool it is to get all the history put together. That's why the history is important of the Jew. All of the things they did. How many times did they ask for prophets to be killed? A lot, because he mentions it in the, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. You killed them. I sent them to you with the information, and you killed them. How many kings did they have? How many kings did they not like? Well, you can probably count the ones they liked on one hand. The rest of them were humdangers. All right? And the priests, even the priesthood. How many priests were good? Just go back through the history of it. And how many of them had, came to really not nice ends? I mean, how distinct and how wonderful is it to have in your obituary, you were fat, fell off the log, and broke your neck. That's how your priesthood ended. That looks good in the news article. OK? You see what I'm saying? It, it's that type of arrangement everywhere. And that's why with all of these things going on, and when he does, when he does the Ephesians thing, Turn to it. Turn to Ephesians real quick. Because it's... For just by grace you have been saved. 2, 8, 9. I'm sorry? For just by grace you have been saved through faith. Yes, correct. And why did they put it that way? Why did he put... Oops, why did he put that that way? And you look at it. And it's... And, it's the, and some of the wording in the Greek is just a little different. But <clears throat> it says, For by grace you are having been saved. Now what does that say? Having been saved. It's already happened. It happened. Already happened. happened. When did it happen? Way back there when he, when it was all lined up, it was all put together. The ones that were coming to Christ he knew about, and that's what it says. It can be a past tense thing. Yeah, all right? My Bible says that it is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. That's exactly right. So that takes the law out of it. All right? That's what he's trying to get across to these people in this little stretch. And the reason that he has to do that is people are attached to the law. A law is a comfortable thing. Um, when you're driving, when I'm driving down the road and I'm going 55 mile an hour and the speed limit is 55 <coughs> mile an hour, what am I not doing? You're not speeding. Say it. Not following the law. I am following. If, it's, if I'm going 55, the speed limit is 55. I don't have to worry about the law, do I? I'm doing it. All right. But the minute I creep over the law and I sneak up to 60. Now what do I start doing? Breaking the law. Breaking the law, and I start looking around. Because of the tail light that you might have on. There you go. Okay. <laughs> see? Now, you see what I'm saying? So that's what the law does for you. It's supposed to give you an indication that you've crossed the line. But people don't look at it that way. They look at it as if this is concrete. All right? I am not going to have less... Well, let's put it this way. I'll make it a question. Am I going to have less blessings in heaven because I go 75 mile an hour on the turnpike when it's 70 mile an hour speed? Yeah. You're sure? Okay, I need you for witness when I get there, okay? Lawyer. Well, I don't want to Lawyer. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. Can we talk about the letter of the law here? Oh, oh, yes, I'm sure. sorry, but if it says 70, that's what you're supposed to drive, not 75. That's mm -hmm. terrible. I cannot imagine. I like that oh, analogy mom. because the other so end of that applies. <laughs> if you go too slow in your analogy, then God knows it. He starts working on you to fulfill the plan that he has. Yes, then he puts me behind you. Yeah. 
Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. 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 Yes. So all I'm saying not, is that uh, that's why saying. it's put together. That's why the law is set up like that. And that's what they're trying to tell them here. Because it says that it's already taken place through faith. And this is not of you. It is the gift. Not a gift. The gift. Go ahead. Sorry. So go back to your law analogy. Yes, ma'am. So you say you're going 75 in a 70. You, uh, you lose your, I mean, maybe it's not you because that's the blessed speed. But <laughs> you lose your peace because you've broken the law. Correct. So, and that's, you know, in the Old Testament times, you broke the law. They had this quiet within them and stuff like that. So in the New Testament side of it, on the church age, the same premise would apply, right? We have we lose our peace when we're doing something the Lord tells us we shouldn't have done. Correct. Yes. Correct. So that would be a good indicator that. And we everything have, that I, yes. Because if we're doing it, we have peace. Sure. We don't even think about it. Exactly. And when I'm going 75 mile an hour, I have peace. Yep. Why? Because I made a point to stop and talk to a police officer. Look at Mrs. Adams rolling her eyes. I love it. And what did the police officer say? To him? He told me flat out. Five over, five over, you're good. But you need to remember. And then that's also good for a, for an organized mind that's melancholy. 75 mile an hour means that I can go 150, 300 miles in four hours. Okay, see, I, it just all works out perfectly. You gotta stay with traffic, though. If uh, you're going to you run over. But Bobby, the thing uh, that reminds me is I understand. it says you have peace. I but do. you have to remember the Bible also says that you'll have peace with me, but you won't necessarily have peace in the world. Correct. Oh, yeah, I don't care about the world. <laughs> so, Bobby, if you're going 70, yes, you are the only one that's going. So, right? I know, that's why I tried to tell that's why I tried to tell Mrs. Adams, but sometimes she doesn't buy that argument. Because I don't care who else is breaking the law. I'm not that's right, the law. she's not breaking the law. I'm going by the law no matter what. I don't care if Jesus comes off the hill. I'm not going to, I'm not breaking the law. Your mom doesn't speed, yeah. but she tries so, to let her work. At any rate, that's what it's talking about. So when it, when it talks about the law, it gives you a reason for it, and then the fact that the reason is there is something to be used. It says, in order at, it's not a complete clause. He does not need your works to activate grace. Okay? That's the part, I think, that we just have to hang on to more than anything out of this, according to grace, because he's instituting it. And for that reason, he says, to be firm. All right? Idiom, present active indicative, as a static present to denote a condition of security which perpetually exists. Okay? Grace doesn't ever go anywhere in a, in a Christian's life, okay? It is always there. It behooves you to have enough doctrine on your shelves to access it on a regular basis. Okay? You may read the word. Yes, ma'am. If you're, if you're shoveling... Bible into you on a regular basis, you're actually feeding the grace complex. One of the good things about that is that when you do that, he writes that doctrine all over the walls of every room in your house that you give to him so that when you need it, he causes something that he put in you that you've been reading and studying to come back up and you remember it and act on it. Yes. Here's the deal. Abraham's got a thing in his head, and he's got a promise. And the thing that he is grasping very, 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 very quickly and heading for maturity is that this promise is firm. It is constant. It's reliable. It is going to be fulfilled. And as time marches on, he gets more firm in it, not less. That's what they're trying to get across, all right? And he said, flip the page. It says and it's firm, and the promise is firm, and it said promise, and the, and the reason that this promise is firm is because of the integrity of God. Okay? Integrity of God is the basis for the promise. Now, what promise did he give you? Um, I always get, how many of you look at your um, phone and, and ask questions to, to Google? I like to do that just because I figured out how to do it, number one. And number two, I do it because I like to ask questions. I like, I like to know the pastors that tell you you can lose your salvation. And there'll be hundreds of them come up. The 
It says you can. It says you can lose your salvation. Okay. Scriptures. Hmm? Not scriptures. Not scriptures. Pastors. People. Uh, Not scripture. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know that. No, I ask, uh, and the thing of it is, is I just wanted to, I, I like to ask those questions for one reason and one reason only. I want to know what people are hearing. <clears throat> because I hear people tell me that. Oh, I can't be sure I'm saved. Or oh, I've lived really bad since I came to Christ. That, that can't be good for me. Or nobody else can take you out of his hand except you, what you do. Well, I've heard that too. That's, yeah, okay. that's actually a So that's basically, yes. So that's what's going on right here, because when it talks about the promise, it's talking about the integrity of God. The thing of it is, how many of you can make promises? Anybody can make a promise. This guy right here, when he makes a promise, it's a promise. It is not changing. All right? So if he's telling me that, and, and always they give you some things, you know, well, there are those that fell away from the faith and all this kind of stuff that they use. And the one that really they don't like is the one about the hands. In my hands, the Father. What did the Father do with hands? Anybody remember? He said, everyone that the Father has put into my hands, no one can likewise take away. It's funny that these denominations have that thing, that something sure. else can take you away, or even you can take it away. And it doesn't seem to occur to them, you could say to them, oh, so uh, God is not perfect. He's not able. He's not able to keep you then. Yeah, there's a, He's there's not a, able to keep his promise. There's a million wrestling matches with yeah. it. And most of the time they stammer and stutter and then they go on to another subject. So yeah, that's right. usually where you're at. But it said, and it talks about this. And it says, this is what you were talking about. And it was a promise to all, the seed. Promise in Genesis 15, 6. Okay? If you look at that one, it's the promise to the human race. Jews and Gentiles that are just to the justice of God, not the Jews. How do we know that? They didn't exist yet. There were no Jews. Okay? So understand that. And then it says, data of advantage to Jews and Gentiles. Uh, that's why we were given the opportunity. Because it was said it was going to be given to us way back here. Alright? What triggered when you go along the timeline, what triggered law and grace? See here, Gentile. What triggered this program to start? Do you remember? Cross. Christ made a statement, I believe in Matthew, and he said that if you will acknowledge me, I will bring the kingdom in. Now. Okay? And what was he saying? He was saying, if they would have accepted him then, the church age would not have taken place. The Jews would have gone right into the millennium. But the problem is, with asking the question, what does they tell you about a good lawyer? He never asks the question without first knowing what? The answer. the answer. Well, you got the best lawyer ever produced in Jesus Christ. He knew the answer. So when they said that they did not want to accept him, they didn't want anything to do with him, it closed the door on the law and started opening the door of grace to the Gentiles. That's why he didn't shoo the lady away from the table that asked about the crumbs that the dogs would eat. Because he knew her day was coming where she would be permitted to have and sit at the table with the Lord. Not only do I like the fact that he knows all those things and everything now, mm -hmm. he knew, or knows, you could say, because he stands outside of time, he knows everything from the start to the finish, oh, and sure, every sure. little detail in between before he ever started making anything. Yeah, my brain can't figure all that out no. at all. But, but yeah, it, it makes sense. So that's what they're talking about. It says, and it says, not only, they put these out of order in the Greek, all right, to the seed of the law, but the law only, but also to the seed of the faith of Abraham. That's why when you're looking at this, Jews under Codex 2, all right, so here's the seed over here, the first part of the seed, all right, and all of the things in the Codex, 
um, all the temple stuff, all the ritual stuff, the Passover stuff, all the uh, Feast of the Tabernacle, Feast of the Trumpets, Feast of this, Feast of that, all of that stuff was over here, and it was, it was given to them for a purpose, even if they didn't get it, and this would have brought them to Christ eventually, okay? And then over here, on the other side, all the ones that are like you and me, over here, you and me, all right? We got a stuff over here, but all is ours is in Christ, but it's all wrapped around grace, all right? This is wrapped around the law, and that's what they're talking about, all right? It said, evangelize Jews from the law here. How did Paul learn what he learned? He said under who? You remember? Gamaliel at one point in the Lord Jesus. Gamaliel, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I'm figuring they were probably the top three teachers in the land at the time. All right? And what did he learn? Well, first from Gamaliel, he learned all of the information that had to do with this codex. All of it. Rituals. Everything. All right? What did it do for him? It gave him status on this side of the cross. What did he tell you from last week's verse? He told you something that was really incredible. I count all that but loss. Not lost, loss. Uh, prophet loss statements. What do you do with the loss stuff? Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Put it away. Put it away. It's not useful to you at all. And that helps? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's basically what he's talking about here. So when they're, when they're talking about this and all these things, then what did he do? Then he had to walk on planet Earth with the Holy Spirit for a while. What did he teach him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so like with the law statement, though, uh -huh. like you're going to look at it and you're going to analyze it. Why am I doing this? What happened? What went wrong? Which in your salvation, what was I doing? So that pulls the stuff off the shelf that you were talking about. That you did in the past. Why did I do that? You know, not to not to bear like burden not to you, beat but yourself up with but it, to, but to so just so you don't do it again, and that yeah. you you just learn a from it. Right. Yeah. So I and the thing of it is, if you do it that yeah. way, you're truly going to have one thing go through your head. Now I know why I'm doing it this way. Right. I am now getting a, a context for what I was. This way didn't work. And where I'm going. Correct. It's it's just it's really a pleasure to see it work correctly. And a Jew that does this. Hence, when you see all these Jews coming to Christ in the tribulation, what's the first thing you notice them doing right away? Crying. Why? They didn't keep the law, and they didn't keep the law, so it meant they didn't get their Christ. They didn't get their Messiah. All right? But the scales were removed so they could see things the way they were supposed to have seen them the first time around. And that's what they're talking about here. So go ahead. What somebody got? So all I'm saying. Liz is Go ahead. You. Go ahead. Oh, you already got it. Okay, we're good. So all I'm saying is with that. So he's got the Holy Spirit. Then he runs into this guy on the Damascus Road. And what did he tell? Him? He A very himself. sound statement. He introduced himself. But he did. But what did he ask him? It was really it was really important what he asked him. Why are you kicking against the goats? There you go. Why did he say something like that? Because he'd been resisting. Tells you he knew where he had to go. He just didn't go there correctly. Right. Okay. Anybody ever seen cows try to kick against the goats? Have you ever seen cows try to walk across the slotted things the first time they think their foot is not on solid ground what do they do they draw back immediately okay why unknown an unknown entity is in front of them and they back up um, all we had to do to change the march of the ducks from my pond to Ron's pond every day was take a garden hose and run it around the <coughs> yard like this and the ducks would leave my pond and march down the edge of the green hose all the way around till they saw common ground, and then they would march down the driveway across to Ron's pond. That's how they're geared. All right? Anything different? Um, the little dog that she has, <coughs> Luna, if a palm frond is in the yard in the wrong place that wasn't there the last time, Along with taking a winkle, we're trying to bark and winkle at the same time. Accurate. Okay? It's quite a process. 
It's bark, squeak, bark, squeak, bark, squeak, all right? But there's something they notice. Well, please understand something. The Jew is going to have that happen in the tribulation. They're going to know what happened. They're going to have a, a perfect understanding of what happened to them, all right? So then it flips over to the next one. And it said, of the law evangelized guys, only the law. And he said, those Gentiles out from faith, faith in Christ, Abraham's faith. And what was Abraham's faith? Do you have any idea what it was? A whole man. Yeah. That's it. That was his total package. It wasn't bells and whistles. And then all of a sudden he started throwing this thing in there about sands. Okay? Sands of the earth. Stars. Stars. Um, you know what Abraham did for a living? Remember what he did? Was he not a shepherd? He was really wealthy, wasn't he? Was he was very well, well, well to do, well. Shepherd. He had a big flocks and big herds and big this and big that. Anybody ever done that kind of stuff? Anybody ever been in the field at night? You guys need to get out more. In the field at night, doing what? Something they have working. Do me a favor. If you ever want to have a good time, go someplace where there's no lights, lay down on the ground, and yep. look at the sky. Oh, yeah, I did that. All right? If you ever get out on the St. John's in an airboat, all right? Spin it around so you're not looking at the at the glow from Melbourne or or Cocoa or anything. Point it towards the other side where it's Duda and Mormon property, and look. And as God is my witness, you can actually see the edge of the Milky Way. Yeah. All right, it's nothing but a, a cluster right through the center where you can see the edge of the Milky Way and all the stars from above. He's doing that in a field with his sheep and his cows and everything else. And then what runs through his head after the promise? I'm going to have more descendants than all those dots in the sky. Okay? Now, if that doesn't buoy your faith, at the same time wanting to counteract it, I don't know what would. Clear something right. up for me, would you please? Yes, sir. I'll do my best. God told Abraham to leave his home country and to leave everybody and leave his family behind. Why did he take his father and his nephew and his servants? Mm -hmm. uh, because he was still human and he probably had a wife. I was just wondering if I missed something that gave him permission to have those things. Uh, no, and you have to understand to also, did him being not, number one, God told him to get out of idolatry. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing he told him. Then he gave him a list of who to take and not to take. You know, why he didn't take his dad. Or why he wasn't supposed to take his dad. Because it would have been an influence of the old things. Exactly. His dad was in, <coughs> fact, his dad was in the moon temple thing. I mean, those all okay. things that he destroyed, those idols, those were his dad's idols, right. his family's idols. Exactly. So what, what happens right here is in doing all of this stuff right here, he takes off and he gets over here. So what happens when dad's with him over here, they get short stopped where they're, before they got where they were supposed to go. So what they got, but here's the deal. Here's the deal, here's the deal. Did that little faux pas right there, did that negate any of this stuff that he had right here for him? Did not negate the promise that was gonna come. No. Did not change what God had told him. Did not change any of the circumstances that God had put before him. But he also said, okay, I understand you're here. I need you to go here, down over here. He got hung up right here. This guy's going to die. Okay, when he dies, then we'll move on. It, it stunted okay. it, though. Wouldn't you say it stunted it? I mean, it's, it just postponed it? Sure. Because, like, even with Christ, when he says, okay, I'll do this kingdom, it, it postponed it. I'm sure it did. Yeah. I'm sure it did. Like, it, it could have it could have happened before. And postponements are good and bad. I mean, good things happen, but it's Sure, the same good things happen, but they're postponements. Yeah. Uh, how many of you have made really, really, really intricate plans for something? It's really great, isn't it? Great. And then what happens to them? Somebody jerks the wheel right off the wagon. I know, exactly. All right, so understand something. Now, there's two different mindsets for that. Okay? You can get madder than a hornet, or you can say, Jesus took that wheel off for a reason. I would like to know what the reason is. Why am I waiting here? What's going to go on from there? Or you do both. That's my favorite. You can do both. Okay. All right. You can hit them both. All right. You can be bummed out and then try to figure out why the wheel's gone. Okay. But here's the deal. It's still gone. Okay. Deal with it. That's what he's telling Abraham. You, you, okay. Didn't, you didn't hurt my promise any, son. 
I need you to get your act together and continue on your journey. And when you continue on your journey, then we'll get to where we're going. And one of the worst postponements was when they decided not to go into the Bill of Promise for sure. the first time. Sure. 40 years worth. Hey, I, I'm not sure. And I understand part of that. All right. That That is, there's times when God does stuff intentionally. Now, when it talks about that, it has the word but here. And it sets up a contrast between the Jews under law, Abraham, Gentile Abraham and salvation. This is the big clinch clause right here. Everybody on that side of the fence that's Jewish wants them to come out and say, yeah, our work's got us somewhere. He can't do that, so he doesn't do that. And Abraham is his, is his go-to guy. Paul always goes to Abraham. Why? Because Abraham is high up in the echelon tray of Jewish history and everything. Anything Abraham did was okay except for getting saved. That kind of messed up the work a little bit. But that's what he's talking about here. So when it talks about Abraham, his faith, his faith had to do with the promise. He knew who took care of the promise. He knew who was going to do the promise. And he also knew one thing. And please understand something. How many of you think Abraham was perfect? Oh, no. Okay, just so you know, there's a lady by the name of Hagar, and there's a wife involved. And this is a pretty big game right here. Okay? Um, I don't know how you... How Abraham was able to put this in a place during this 13 years is grace. Okay? He has got to know and over the years, this little deal right here has been such a bane to the existence of nation Israel that it is just unbelievable. I think that uh, ranks right up there alongside the fact that they didn't kick out all the people of Canaan. It was well, it also comes back here to a guy named Adam when he did his boo-boo. Yeah. It's pretty big. All right? So that's what they're talking about. Put the page and says, Abraham, who is the father of all, now here's the deal. When he says he's the father, how many of you uh, have people that are Jewish friends? Anybody have Jewish friends? <clears throat> okay. How, how do you, you have pretty normal relationships with them? You ever talk uh, religion with them? Anybody? Barely? Doubt? Usually not? I, I swam for Hebrew Swimming Club when I was younger, and I used to stay at their house, and they used to stay at mine, and my mom made them come to church with us, and they made me Good go to the synagogue with them. Okay. For, they had Sunday school as well. Uh huh. But they made uh, vice versa. Okay. And they did the rules of my house. And it was interesting. And both everybody lived by them adequately. Yeah, they. They were kids. Well, their parents never minded. Never minded you. Yeah. That's good. I'm just curious. I mean, I've, I've, I. I mean. I, it, it, I've only been around a couple of them that were really staunch and heavy duty. Some of them are just humdingers, you know, that say they're Jewish but not really doing any of the stuff. But, but it was interesting. It is, a, you, it, you know, different situation. But they never, they never really. It is very in front of my face. They never made me feel bad. Okay, that's that's really nice to know because I mean I've never been around it, and it, <coughs> it, there are stark differences. I mean, stark differences in that I was just curious as to how they would respond. And some of them are going to be better than others, I'm sure. Yes, ma'am? Well, I was just going to say, because we have a friend, Debbie, who's Jewish, and she she knew we were Christians, and, you know, of course, we knew she was Jewish. Her husband's not Jewish. But it wasn't until she got cancer that she... Started asking those... Asked us to pray for those her. Those dog and children to start praying for her. Yes. Yes. And she asked again... And again, and again, and again, and finally she said, you know, I think that prayer did something. And I said, you know what it did? It made me understand you, and you understand me. I know, you tell me you don't believe something, but by God, you're hanging on to every piece of the skirt you can hang on to. And she said, you're right. So, yeah, it is really interesting and, and with Abraham being the, the, the common card it is a good talking it's a good place to start talking 
on a legitimate ground because the moment they bring up the law, then you say, well, what about Abraham? He came to Christ before the law. Oh, he came to God. I said, oh, okay. Go ahead. Would you be able to say he actually, because Christ was always there, and he was the one they were dealing with before he came here as a person, he was actually working with Jesus. Right, and, and here's the deal. All you want to do is have conversations. All I want to do is have somebody think about Jesus Christ. The other people I'm working for down here, they say they go to church, but they're, they, they do it sporadically, and then they get upset with something, they go on somewhere else. And I said, you know, well, you know, if you want, when you, if you come as a husband and wife, I'll be glad to teach you. If you're just going to come one of you one week and one of you the next week, don't come. I'm not interested in it. I don't need half stories going back and forth to home. And they looked at me kind of shocked. And I said, well, I'm just saving you time. I said, why waste your time if you're going to half do something? And they said, well, then when we get into this place, we're going to start coming. I said, well, that'll remain to be seen as you parked in a seat. Then I'll know you're coming. And, and I said, and I, I won't ever mention it again. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's OK. So all I'm saying is this is how this, this, is how this works, all right? Abraham, who. And who is the father, okay? This is your father status. This is your pattern status. Ancestor to the pattern. Used as a pattern. Abraham the father. And he's not only the father of nation Israel. He's the father of anyone that came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Those that became believers, Jews and Gentiles. Also, once again, once you become a Christian, you are not a Jew or a Gentile. You are a Christian. You are a Christ believer. That is all you are. Okay, you don't exist in the old school. That's what it's talking about. Now, handful of principles here. Abraham is the pattern of salvation to the adjustment of justice of God. All right. Every time he's the pattern. Anybody that walks down an aisle, anybody that puts their head down and bows their or closes their eyes when they're sitting all by themselves and say, Jesus Christ, I need you to come into my life. I believe you existed. You came to earth. You died. You raised. Went up to heaven. That individual, that individual is the person that has made a commitment to Jesus Christ. That's the only way they can do it. That is all Abraham did. I'm going to believe the integrity of that guy that just told me I'm going to be the father of nations. No questions asked. As we get into it further, you'll see that. Pattern for maturity adjustment to the justice of God. Abraham got to the maturity. How do we know he got to maturity? Because at the age of 99, he said, yeah, go ahead, circumcise me. Romans somewhere, somewhere it says more than once that nothing under the law um, had, had that quality of maturity. So Correct. How, how is that, how do you... Fold it together with him that? coming to Christ? No, coming to maturity. Him coming to maturity. Because he'd never ever faltered from what God had told him. And when God came to the end, it's, I would assume that his circumcision was the same thing as you saying, I accept Jesus Christ. Yeah, that doesn't mean you're uh, mature. But, but to him it must have. Whatever was going on in here in him, God accepted what he was what, what was going on in here, or he would not have done the circumcision. I will assume. That's all I can assume. That, that, that's because, not his salvation, though. Hmm? That's not his. No, salvation. that's an so example. That, that's an example. Later on, which would explain. Say it, it. Say it loud. The salvation was how many years earlier when he. Correct. Left Thirteen Earth. years, but whenever. So even before when he left Earth, I mean, that's he correct. made a choice. Correct. So that would be the initial salvation. Correct. So and this was an example of what had happened in his maturity status. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, uh, no. Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm trying to justify. No, you're just justice. saying nothing in the law was can bring about maturity. Maturity. Right. All right. So what it amounts to is whatever. He wasn't in the law. He wasn't in the law. Right. He was in Christ 13 years earlier, and he was mature. Just like you and I, as we read and we get confused, <laughs> yeah. we're maturing. Okay. okay well, we don't. What about David and all the prophets that were under the law? Okay. What about them? Does that verse not apply to them? No. Nope. They were mature. They were mature somehow. Why was David mature? What matured David? Okay, maybe a better way of asking. Let me let me ask. Okay. Is the same level of maturity that we can? No, I don't think they could ever have. Well, I imagine you probably could with standards, but I don't think you ever could have the maturity you have when you have a, a complete canon of scripture. I think you can mature a whole lot more because they didn't understand the church age, they didn't understand grace, they didn't understand cross. 
crucifixion, any of that stuff. They accepted what, a, what an entity, a higher being told them, and what the higher being told them made sense to them at the time. David, when do you know David was, was, had matured? It's really easy. The best, best time to find out whether David matured or not is when, when um, who was it that, what was the prophet that came to him? Oh, Nathan. Nathan. Nathan came to him. What did Nathan tell him? <coughs> what story did he give him? About the lamb. And what did, he, what did he go about as far as the lamb goes? He said, well, he ran, went on a rant. What was the rant? Well, whoever took that lamp, you ought to take it away from him and pay him back a hundredfold and yada, yada, yada. Who is that guy? And good old Nathan's going, uh, you. Shook his bony finger. In what did he do king. with that? What did he do with it? He said, you're the one, king. He immediately fell. He immediately crashed as king right. and said, I'm going to take care of that. I, I admit, I, I'm off the rails. Go ahead, you're going to say something? I don't... I think he also showed maturity when his son died and, you know, there was a, a level of acceptance. I mean, you know, because I think of that faith rest, you know, that being able to... You mean when Absalom got hung in the tree? Oh, when the baby died. Baby died. Yeah. Baby died. Yes, sackcloth. But even in that, you'll find out that somebody had to... He That one's probably a good one. Absalom was not a good one. But the one with the thing, because he went into sackcloth and ashes for a while and then said, okay, now he gave... That's when he gave a statement that he said that he was had a deeper understanding of what was going on, I will see him again. Okay? Where did he get that information? It didn't come from the law. No. And it didn't come from his head. Where did it come? It came from something that was part of him, whether it was in and out. I don't, you know, the Holy Spirit came and went at that particular time. But something gave him that information. Okay? And we know it's different because he could pray an imprecatory prayer. He could pray a prayer that said, do me a favor, go kill all those people. And they would die. We're not allowed to do that in grace. So something's different. But with all of that, somewhere, and you have to trace it back, I'm almost sure, you're going to find a spot similar to that, similar to Abraham, that you can see where they crossed the line and the law was not as important as it used to be to them. Right. And it lost more importance the more they grew. And also with, with his wife. Where they both matured to the point where his circumcision corresponded with her being fertile again. Which is a maturity thing. How do we know that? Because blessing doesn't come about without righteousness being part of the entity. It's, it's what I'm gathering. Okay? So I'm saying somewhere he's learning not with the law. Somewhere he's hanging on to the promise more than the law. And, and finally, only the promise, not the law. And that's when his maturity kind of got to a zenith. And then how do we know that he was even went beyond maturity beyond that? He took the son that was given to him 20 years later. Okay? And what did he do with him? Marched him up a mountain and was ready to kill him. Why? Because the one that had made an experience in him back here was still working in his life and gave him the, the peace to do what he was going to do. That's the only way I can read it. I don't, I, I, like I said, I'm going with what Scripture says. And when it says law can't give you any of that stuff, something had to enter, enter the picture along the way to introduce that information along the way. The only thing that can do that is grace, Christ, uh, mercy, all the things that go with, with Jesus Christ. That's all, I mean, that's all I'm saying. That's all I have, the only way I can see it. If that makes sense. Okay? And, right. with, and with all of that, I'm, you know, the more you study this, the more you want to understand that the law is nothing but an impedance to everything I'm trying to learn. I mean, it is really just a road. I have to crawl over the wall to get anything done. Basically. Because your mind wants to go to the law because the law is comfortable. The law gives me a list. The law gives me boundaries. Grace, not so much. Okay? Am I allowed to eat seafood? Why? Because it's not. Well, if you read about it, you don't necessarily want to eat seafood. But why, why am I permitted to eat seafood? Number one, I'm a Gentile. Number two, I'm not under any law. 
Okay. That means rock shrimp are on the table. I had that last night. Okay. All right. You heathen, but that's all right. Okay. But you see what I'm saying with all of that? You, you automatically want to kind of go that way because it's a safety factor. Would I be wrong in saying that Abraham was not mature, fully mature, until the, about the last days of his life? Because during his life, he dealt with Abraham for different things <coughs> that he valued that God needed him to back off away from. Throughout his life, he picked various different things that he had to deal with Abraham over. Right. But here's the deal. Your humanness does not counsel out grace. No. Right. Ever. No. Okay? Never. When the big C dropped, okay, this is a change for him. This means that he's going to get more and 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 more until he's dead. Okay? It doesn't say he became more perfect. No. It just means he allowed grace to do more of what he did. Okay? I don't think that phrase could ever be used. What? That somebody is, how do I want to say this? more perfect. It's, it's an oxymoron. If you knew how many preachers I hear preach that garbage, you would be sick to your stomach. It's an oxymoron, isn't it? No. Well, you know, obviously not. Somebody's grabbing onto it. But that's just the way they, they are. They take a word and they twist it. And that's what that's for another day, okay? Um, the link between salvation and maturity adjustment is spirituality. What are we talking about? The more God becomes important to you, the less the world becomes important to you. The more you've Keep yourself entertained with Christ and His stuff, the less you're going to be on this side of the fence. And as, a, as you do that, the more you're going to think Christ-wise and not you-wise. All right? And that's what they're talking about here. So when I'm saved, everything's peaches and cream. It's all rainbows and lollipops and butterflies and all that kind of stuff. Then all of a sudden you're walking along your Christian life and reality dumps in front of you. And you say, well, this isn't all that great. Well, it is, because now you have to find out what you got when you were in the peaches and cream neighborhood. Find out what he gave you, and that's what salvation and maturity. He wants you saved. He also wants you mature. Okay? Told you. He wants outback Christians, not Gerber Christians. Got it? Yes, sir. You mean like uh, being, being uh, mature mean like... Uh, like a human being, or if you uh, no, ma'am. Not, not being out of diapers. I'm talking about being God, right? where you take that. When a scenario hits you, you go, all right, I'm yours, Christ. How are you going to handle it? It's on your plate. Tell me if there's anything I need to do, let me know. Other than that, I'm, you're going to do it, and I'm taking it off my, off my chart. Now, what happens when you do that? You grow. You grow. Why? Why? Because you're figuring out, here's his plan. I'm going to let him institute it. That's the deal. Al, I want another job. I'm putting my name in for another job. If this is his job from him, I'm going to take that job. If it's not, it won't materialize. What does Al do? Al's out in front of the office every time with his sign. Pick me. Pick me. Pick me. Right? No. Al says, it's in his hands. The outcome is his. The response will be mine through him. That's all it is. Okay? That's what I'm saying. It, it's, it's so dreadfully simple, it's sad. When I ask him for something, I... Remember how long I didn't have a window in my truck? <laughs> two years. Two winters. Okay? I take a... A shirt and hang it over this arm, and then I can hang it out the window. All right? Because it's cold some of those times. Well, I said, Lord, can I have a window for my truck? Well, first he gave me a door. I said, the door ain't got no window, Hoss. I got a door. I didn't need a window. And as I'm driving down the road, I go to get a part for my truck, and a guy says, hey, you look like you got a door that's kind of worn out because, you know, where you rest your arm on the door all the time, it rusts out eventually. You can see the ground through my door where my arm was on it for 30 years, okay? He said, this is looking kind of tired. I said, yeah. He said, I got a door right over there. You want it? 
I was going two years. Yeah. He said, window, huh? And it had a window. And it had a push button window. Oh. <laughs> Things are looking good. All right? So that's all right. But then the other one quit. And it only comes down this far. But it only comes down that far when you go over a bump. <laughs> and then you got to get a wedge of wood and stick it in the door and hold it up. That's my life. And I don't ask them. I just say, here, I'm looking for another window. And I don't need the window. I need the track that goes on the bottom of the window because it's all rusted off. You see what I'm saying? Now, I don't worry about it after that. Put it in his hands. The good thing is the next step after it happens uh -huh. and you're looking back and you realize that he had that door <coughs> on its way from you when it actually belonged on somebody else's truck That's right. and he directed all the steps when it was going to be removed and all the people it was going to go to I to get to where it was going to show up where the guy offered it yep, to you. I can, guarantee, I can guarantee you there's a door angel around somewhere. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I'm positive of it. And he goes around and he said, yep, there's Bobby's door. I'm going to write his name yeah. on this door. And then over here, two years, it's going to show up over here. And this is the way complete. I guarantee it. That's how it works. All right? It's just that we can't see that. So we well, I, I, don't, I don't really care anymore. I, that's the fun part. I don't care. I, li I love seeing the results yeah. because I can imagine all the fun things. Okay? I can imagine some guy thinking, boy, I really love this truck. And somebody T-bones it from the side that I don't need the door. <laughs> you see how that works? It's wonderful. Well, not for that guy, but for me, okay? All right? So that's what you're talking about. Now, spirituality is the dispensation of the church, is the filling of the spirit, all right? However, spirituality in Abraham's time was a function of the faith rest technique. What are we talking about? He got a word, hooked himself to the word, took the word and beat the word and used the word and pulled the word and ran the word and put the word, put the word on his frontlet, put everything he did with the word. And then what did he do? went about as if that word was already taking place. That's what he was talking about. That's why he did it his way. That's why he could sit there and look at the stars and just brim with the glory of God. All right. That's why this is really cool. Grace is not but glory begun, and the glory is but grace perfected. The moment that baby was born, that man saw grace in action. Because you had two sexually dead people here that had produced a child here. And there was no other explanation for it. None. There was not a person in the world that said they went down to Sears and picked that baby up. Alright? Can you imagine seeing a hundred year old woman? Pregnant, walking around the village. I can't unsee. I'm sorry. I said you couldn't unsee that. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> unsee that. That's true. All right. So all I'm saying is, this is the kind of stuff that you got going. Now it says we must interpret our sentence from a parentheses from 17 to 21. Emphasis: the missing link between salvation and maturity. He's going to tell you over the next few verses how Abraham matured along the way. And what got him to the point of maturity to where he was useful to God and not a, a scrambled up mess that he was from the time of Hagar to the time of this. All right? That's what they're talking about. On display is Abe's spirituality and maturity adjustment. And the spirituality carries a positive believer towards doctrine between salvation and maturity. So doctrine is going to be your vehicle from point A to point B all along the way and there's not a thing you can do about it. You can read all the self-help books you want. You can read all the testimonials you want. You can go to many evangelistic programs as you want. But until you sit down and start putting that book together piece by piece and getting the whole story put together, it is not going to make a lick of sense to you and it's not going to benefit you because you've got to have context for what you're believing. Okay? I'm out of time? Okay. Got to have context. And the context is going to be Abraham, no law, doing what we're doing now, and that is having a belief system that is set up in Jesus Christ, and there is no other way to look at it. And everybody says, well, there was, that Christ didn't exist back then. I said, hey, Lord, you're not really saying that, right? And he said, well, I said, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all one pile. 
They're all there. They all exist. Just because there's no red lettering in the Old Testament well, doesn't yeah. mean he wasn't around. I would think so. And the thing that is with all of that is, one thing we do know for a fact is, the only one that ever physically showed up in the Old Testament was Jesus. Okay? I told you when we started this, when was the last time Jesus stopped by your house? Does he? Way to go, Ace. Yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. We end up um, right at the end of that page, whatever the next page. One more, One more to go. Yeah. So, all right. Let me see here. I put all the folks on here, Ken, and Tom, Lisa, Claudia, Grace, and Katie, Ann. Anything on you? Are you still okay? Yes. Okay. How about the one you put on here last time? Oh. So. Ooh. Was it you that put it on here? Somebody had somebody that was wearing out? My identity. Yes. He did pass away. Yes. The first day of July. Oh, okay. That's right. I knew there was a, you know, to keep all these things going on in my head. All right. Yes, ma'am. Katie, um, Katie on that list is my old boss's daughter that has breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Her ex-husband is now trying to bring lawyers in saying that she's unfit to watch her kids because she has cancer. Oh, oh. he sounds like a real peach. Yes. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Good Lord of mercy. Yeah. All right. Put the military men and women on here. They lost a hand for a couple of them in, in Afghanistan here lately. Um, Al's mom and dad. Dave's mom is not in Cedar Creek. She's back at the hospital. All right. So keep that in your prayers because that gets to be a, a, a real mess. Just got a word though that the abscess that's on her colon that there is the issue is shrunk quite a bit. Shrunk? Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. All right. So we just need to pray that there's a place for her when she's done with that place. Yeah. All right. It might be the house. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in there. And mom, they took her off her meds and really scrambled her up, so she's back on her meds. So we're not sure where that's headed. Um, the folks that could be traveling because it's summertime, sale of your house, still on there. Um, Spencer Freeman's so-so. Came home, but not doing that great. Uh, Teresa is still in the middle. I haven't heard anything from her, so I'm going with no news is good news. My sister, as far as whatever she's wrestling with. Mikey Boucher, who I've known forever, is getting his ankle replaced this, this I think it was this week. All right. And then Robert Locke, internal infection. infection. Marianne, praise granddaughter's health, family issues. Lois, continuing prayer for Tony Pallada, co-worker, his wife, Ruth. She's recovering from a stroke. Tony is physically run down. Yeah, tell me about that. Uh, pray for him. Wow, that's a lot of work. And one other thing that I thought of, the, there was a horrific, horrific accident, I guess, on, on 528. And, <coughs> I don't know if on, on the bridge. They had the bridge so really closed yeah. yesterday. So it I, must have been last night. It was there a was hit and run, run with, with road rage. Oh, really? I'm sorry? It was a hit and run with road rage. Oh, that's what I saw. A, they smashed up a car, or two or three cars, and the guy took off. It was a red car from the article I read that hit the Mustang in the back, pushed him into westbound, and then somebody westbound hit him. And so, and somebody, somebody was killed. Was killed. killed. Somebody was, was killed. killed. He was killed. Yeah. The guy in the Mustang was yeah, killed. Yeah, for all, that, all this mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As it gets worse with more traffic. Yeah, it's not a happy time. All right, what else we got here? Uh, Chuck Garrison's family, Chuck's father passed away, and my niece needs prayer to stop doing drugs and be able to get her children back, and that God will save her. All right, sounds like a deal. Eva, Dad, Frank, mm -hmm. in the hospital, what's hey, wrong? With he's rooming over there with uh, Dave's. Oh, oh, is that what it is, huh? Oh, Lord, we ought to pray for that wing. All right. Seventh floor. <laughs> Action on the seventh floor. The sister is coming from this Wednesday. Pray he is out. Is he okay? Just something not serious? Mike. Hey, just old. Okay. Well, I didn't say that. I just mature. Yeah. Like I say, if you if you if you're not an old fart, you have an old fart. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That's for sure. All right. Jordan Straw. These are adult kids of my cousins who need salvation, deliverance from drugs and alcohol, some of homosexuality. Robin Schaefer, Megan Stauffer, Mason Miles. Did you get all the names right. Robert. Yes. Okay. And you skipped one. Oh, my skip. Where did I skip? What did I skip? Wally. Eva. Wally. 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 You oh, wrote Wally it. and his wife. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I just pray for these people all the time, and I don't even look at it anymore because it, it's just on your heart. Okay. And there's something else. Is there anything else? I, think? I can't think of anything else. There's one other. Yes, sir. Our family begins our trip out west tomorrow. Oh, and nice. Jen and I will be going in, the, in our van, driving about three or four days, getting out there, get things set up for the rest of the family to come flying in. And uh, we're going to be going for about three weeks. Cool. So uh, just uh, pray for where, where are we headed out west? Uh, going out to Zion National Park. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to be staying in Orderville, Utah, and that's the center point to go to Zion and over the Grand It's Grand a good Mormon Grand. mission field yeah, there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be out there, and then the, uh, the family will drive, uh, we'll fly back, and then Jen and I'll be driving back with everything. Well, enjoy uh, yourself. So. Send us pictures. Oh, yeah. See what I can you do. Such you got a new phone. Yeah, I know. Finally. <laughs> yes, I can take pictures and see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? Anything else? Uh, oh. Got a short lift there, didn't it? Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. Pray that you just allow us to use this information wisely. Keep putting it together. And above all, we give you the honor and glory for whatever transpires this week. Let us use your feet to get it done. In Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm.